Hear that static? That might actually be to your benefit, and I'll tell you why. It's Johnny Jones, and I'm here at home, and back in 2021, the FCC decided to allow FM transmission modes on CB radio. So if you purchased a new radio in the last couple years, like this Redivus MB3A, you probably have a button on the front just gathering dust that says FM. So why should you push that button? What's the difference between FM and AM? Which one has better clarity and range? How do they work and how do they function? Well, I'm going to go draw on my refrigerator and intuitively tell you how they work. Let's go. So AM versus FM, which one's really better? Well, first and foremost, I need to teach you how they work because they're very situational. And if you don't understand how they work, you won't know which one to use in what case. And if you're not ready to learn anything, by all means, there's plenty of kitty cat videos and whatever on YouTube you can go watch. As for us, we're going to learn about amplitude modulation versus frequency modulation. And I will show you on a meter after this the difference. So amplitude modulation works like this. We have Pac-Man here. He's speaking into his microphone. Now his voice is mixed with a carrier from the radio at 27 megahertz. And what you get, the result, is changes in amplitude. You can see here we have 10 volt, 0 volt, and negative 10 volt. Those are arbitrary numbers. I'm just trying to let you understand the concept that you can see 5 volts here. There's changes in voltage, see? There's changes in voltage. Now on the FM side, we have frequency modulation. What that means is not Pac-Man. is speaking into a microphone mixed with the carrier, but things get weird with FM. We have 10 volts and negative 10 volts here, arbitrary numbers, of course. But nothing happens. It's straight as an arrow. There's no changes whatsoever in voltage. There's only changes in frequency. You can see the frequency get fast here, slow down here, and speed up here. Changes in frequency. So, how can we view this on a meter so that you can intuitively understand how they work? All right, so I'm going to show you on a meter the difference between AM and FM. Now, currently, my radio is on AM. Remember, that's amplitude modulation. It's ran into a dummy load so we don't annoy people with our testing. And I want you to pay close attention to the watt meter here. So I'm going to push the push to talk button on my mic, and you'll see the carrier. Now that carrier is at 27 megahertz. Now I'm going to speak into that carrier and watch the power levels. Auga! Auga! You can see there's changes in amplitude there when I'm speaking, right? Now, what do you think will happen if I go to FM? Well, you may have already guessed that we're going to get nothing but the carrier. No power changes at all. We're speaking into the microphone, Auga, and there is no change in power. Now, what does that mean? Is it detrimental and is it useful? Well, let's go look at the refrigerator again. All right, so in AM, we had an increase in power because there's changes in amplitude going on when we're speaking into our microphone. In FM, frequency modulation, we had no changes at all in power. And that's because, of course, the frequency itself is what is changing. So no matter how much you scream into your microphone, there's not going to be any variation of power. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, there's a few things you have to consider. Now, it may seem like FM is the weaker of the two modes, considering there's no change in power when you're speaking into the microphone. But they both have pros and cons, and I'm going to show you when FM actually comes in handy. Well, at least it's the first time I can say I've been on my knees for a video. So what's up with AM and FM? What's their pros and cons? Well, AM, because not only are we transmitting with amplitude modulation, but we're listening for amplitude modulation, it also listens for spikes in amplitude. So it's more susceptible to environmental noise like lightning strikes or engine noise. And that's why they had to come up with the noise blanker to get out high spikes of energy. Now, FM is minimally affected by that because it's listening for frequency changes. FM has better clarity at medium range because, for one, just engine noise, lightning strikes, people talking like crazy all over each other. FM is better at medium range. It just sounds better. It really does. Um, now, with AM, signals can overlap, and that's really important. Now, obviously, that's when someone's talking and someone talks at the same time on the same channel. You can hear both voices, but because we have a brain, 
we can distinguish very often between the voices. And that's very important for skip. If there's uh, no skip, or excuse me, if there's skip with FM, literally the strongest signal would win, okay? And that's because FM locks onto a signal, okay? The strongest signal wins. So let's say you're on a channel and there's two people and they both have a similar competing signal. You probably heard this when you're going down to the road listening to your FM radio. You'll hear two radio stations booming in and out at the same time. They'll just keep going back and forth. And that's because FM tracks the strongest signal. And because it tracks the strongest signal, there's also an issue with signal cutoff. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So there's more people using AM. And that's to its detriment, obviously, because, God, there's a lot of noise, right? If you use FM when everyone else is using AM, you're going to hear a lot less static, a lot less splattering, a lot less noise. I've gotten 600 miles, okay, 600 miles AM before, okay, on, on channel 28. You cannot skip with FM. Now, there's a signal drop-off rate here, okay? With AM, we have noise here. Okay, my marker will work. So here's your voice, right? Or you're, you're listening to someone on the radio. We have, you know, great signal up here. And as it degrades, it gets slowly more and more into the noise. But if you, if you listen closely enough, or the person is screaming loud enough, you'll be able to pick them out over the noise. With FM, there's a signal cutoff. And that is one of the unfortunate things about FM, is that when it gets down to the noise, before it gets to the noise, it stops tracking. Strongest signal wins. It defaults to nothing. Just like digital TV. Remember how analog TV, you could watch it and it had fuzz on it? You could even watch it if it was, I mean, you could just barely differentiate shapes on the screen, but you were still getting the channel. But then when you switch to digital, all of a sudden, if your signal isn't up to 50 or 60 percent, everything just stops. It goes black. The same way with FM. Now, there's few users. One of the most amazing things about FM is no one decided to use it. And that, my friends, is why that noise is to your benefit. It's not the noise itself, but it's what it implies. No one in my town is using FM transmission modes on CB. So if you want to cut down on some of the fart noises, the people screaming audio, or all the noise toys, try to use FM at medium ranges. It'll be good to you. Now, of course, it's never going to beat AM at long range. AM will always win long range. But if you'd like to have a casual conversation with one of your friends, use FM. Now, remember, most people aren't using it, so don't try to jump on the air and talk to people using FM because I highly doubt anyone's going to be using it around you. But remember to like and subscribe. It's China Jones. I'm here at home. Hope you liked the video, and I'll see you later.